Hi, I'm Gary Thompson of FX Open UK, and this is our latest video taking a look back at the major stories that have impacted the financial markets in the last few days. But where to start? We can't really ignore US dollar strength. You know, people are talking about a sustained rally, and it has been surprisingly strong against other major global currencies, and in particular against the euro and the great British pound. Now, this is despite facing similar issues of, yes, you guessed it, inflation and geopolitical concerns, twinned with the fact that it's lost its status as the global settlement instrument for oil. Now, normally these factors would lead to expecting some sort of weakness, but as I said, it is performing particularly well against majors. But what about alternatives? Well, let's take a look at Bitcoin. The US dollar is performing well against Bitcoin as well. In fact, the inverse correlation of Bitcoin with the US dollar is currently at a 17 month high. The coefficient has fallen to 0.77 below zero for the week ending the 3rd of July. So these alternatives are now perhaps not looking quite as attractive as a good old fashioned major in the US dollar. Another sort of bit of chat during the rounds at the moment is our investors preferring stock market indices to currencies and alternatives. We're sticking with Bitcoin, that's lost 60% of its value in 2022. The NASDAQ index is down around 29%. Again, is this fueling the drive between alternatives, currencies, and indices? Back to the dollar. The US dollar index, which is an index used and measures against a basket of other majors, is currently trading around its January 2003 highs of 105.78, which again indicates some pretty good strength for the dollar. But will that remain? Or will the issues affecting the rest of the globe catch up with the dollar? We're just going to have to wait and see. Now, obviously, at the moment, we can't really do one of these videos without talking about actions of central banks. And this time, it's the turn of Australia. The Reserve Bank of Australia, or RBA as we'll be referring to it as, increased its interest rates this week by 50 basis points, taking the 1.35% versus just the 0.1% back in April of this year. as the sharpest tightening of monetary policy since 1994. Now, whilst not wanting to sound like a broken record, you can't really ignore the fact that this is predominantly being driven by inflation, with all of the central banks across the world looking at increasing rates to try and stem the tide of inflation. Now, Philip Lowe, the RBA governor, warned further interest rates hikes ahead, again, echoing what's been said in the UK and in Europe and the US. What's that meant for the Aussie dollar? Well, the Aussie dollar has been its lowest since June 2020 against the US dollar this week. However, Philip Blood did mention and the RBA mentioned that there's some strength still in the labour market with employment at its highest level in over 50 years. Is that going to be enough or are we going to see further interest rate cuts, not just in Australia, but across the globe? Again, something we're just going to have to wait and see. Now we're going to turn our attention towards the UK and the great British pound. As already mentioned, is seeing some serious weakness against the US dollar. And we've seen it get drop below 120 this week. Currently trading around the 119.8 mark. A little bit up on where it was a couple of days ago. But there's quite a lot been going on in the UK that can have an impact on sterling. The British government, I think as probably many of you have seen, is pretty much in turmoil. And the latest news being that the Prime Minister has agreed to resign, has agreed to step down. Although when that's actually going to take place at this point in time, Nobody actually knows. A lot of economists and analysts are saying that actually this is more about economic growth than Boris Johnson and the UK government. You know, the cost of living, inflation have definitely had an impact on the government and the perceptions of the government, but also taking its toll on economic growth and thus the strength of GBP. I think it's fair to say that at the moment, confidence in GBP across the world is pretty much like the confidence in the UK government. It's low, no doubts about it. Will a change in government help bounce the pound back up again? We just don't know. What impact has there been? It's very difficult to tell with so much other stuff going on in the world today. Just stepping away from currencies, interest rates for a little while, we're going to take a look at Apple stocks. Now, Apple launching a new product, which is going to be available to order from the 8th of July. New MacBook Air 2, new chips, the full shebang. This often is seen as positive news for companies such as Apple particularly as the share price has decreased by more than 20% from April the 1st to July the 1st this year. Now, historically, we've seen huge numbers of orders 
And I'm sure Apple are banking on new orders coming in and increasing the share price. However, we are seeing quite a few analysts downgrading Apple stock, not in blaming on the slowdown in the PC market, of course, inflation and interest rates, and of course, geopolitical concerns across the globe. In fact, Goldman Sachs this week decreased their target from $157 to $130. Evercore ISI decreased their target to $180. Now, obviously, there's quite a discrepancy in those figures, whereas Deutsche Bank rose theirs to $175. And there is a consolidated opinion of about 28 Wall Street analysts being taken this week. And what they're saying is looking at a target price of about 185.05 in 12 months, currently trading around the 140, 143 mark. We did see a bit of a sell-off earlier in the week with some quite big numbers in terms of volume coming out. The price dropped down to about $135. There was a lot of interest in buying at that point. So is that a level of support? That's something we'll keep our eyes on. But certainly one of the major players around the globe in terms of technology, interesting to see quite a few downgrades coming out on their stock.